Hi everyone and welcome. Choosing a Linux kernel. What does the kernel do? Manages resources, devices, memory, file system, processes, acts as an interface to the hardware, provides users with an API with a useful level of abstraction to user space programs. The kernel is a trusted element that has a complete and unrestricted access to the underlying hardware. Therefore, it runs in kernel space. Actions that can be performed without any special privilege run in user space instead. Transition from user space to kernel space is triggered by any of the following. A CPU instruction such as system call or breakpoint, a signal sent by a process or the operating system, a system call, a software interrupt such as a page fault or an exception, an hardware interrupt. Each platform, such as ARM or Intel, for example, executes a different set of steps to transition from user space to kernel space. However, the interactions between the two spaces are similar across all systems. It can be summarized by the following diagram. So we have the application on top of everything and then the C library and then by using the C library we can reach the system call handle. So as you can see user space and kernel space. On the left we have the interrupts and you can see that the hardware can use the interrupts to talk to the level above. If you want, you can pause the video here or you can simply go back. Now I'm moving forward, moving next right here. So the C library is the primary interface between the user space and the kernel one as it's able to translate user level functions into system calls. As you can see, right? Okay, the system call interface uses architecture specific technologies such as traps or software interrupts to switch the CPU level from user to kernel mode, enabling the program to access all functionalities of the CPU and all memory addresses. The system call handle dispatches each call to the right kernel subsystem memory manager, file system code, and so on. The kernel is just one of the essential components of the Linux operating system, together with the C library, basic command tools, etc. The Linux kernel can be coupled with GNU user space to create the GNU Linux operating system, Android user space to create the Android operating system, Busybox user space to create embedded systems, and many more combinations. Operating systems derived from the defunct BSD, such as FreeBSD, OpenBSD, NetBSD, and so on, are structured differently. Kernel, toolchain, and user space are combined into a single code base. Linux is a kernel, while BSD distributions are complete products. Let's have a look at some versioning. Before July 2011, the accepted format was the following. An odd minor version number indicated a developer release 
while an even one would mean that the camera was ready to be installed on end user computers. So that would mean that the camera was stable. Every now and then a fix would be pushed which would increase the rightmost number if present that would be called the stable number. As the minimum version number was later dropped, the numbering jumped from 2.6.39 to 3.0. And we're going to be dealing with this uh, versioning system later on. I'm going to give you more details. A full cycle of kernel development starts with the opening of the merge window. The development community then pushes all code that is deemed to be stable into mainline kernel. The window stays open for approximately two weeks. Then Torvalds close the window and produce the release candidates which are labeled appending RC1, RC2, etc. During this time, people test the kernel and submit bug reports and fixes. When everything is ready, the kernel is released. You can easily access all kernel release change logs at this address over here. After the release of a mainline kernel managed by Torvalds, the code is pushed to the stable tree. A new development cycle can now begin on mainline kernel, while bug fixes will be stored into the stable tree. Releases that mainly publish bug fixes are called point releases and are now marked by a third number, the rightmost one. So we seen before that we were having that the third number would be the developer release or stable release, right? Was indicating whether that release was uh, good enough to be installed on user computers or was, to, was meant to be for developers. Now, the meaning of these numbers are slightly changed, right? As already explained, before version 3, four numbers were used, right? Now, some kernels are labeled as long-term ones and maintained for two years or more. That's some kit instruction that you can use to clone the uh, Linux kernel repository and to switch to the branch that you wish. And we're going to be uh, giving more instructions and more details about it, this uh, on the next classes. And that will be all for today. I hope you've enjoyed this class. Thank you very much.